Hi everybody, it's Julie here with a quick tutorial on how to prep your SVG cut files for use in Cricut Design Space. So the first thing you want to do is launch Design Space from your desktop there. Make sure you're logged in. And I'm going to go up here to the upper right and click New Project. And once I click on that, it's going to take me to the canvas. And this is basically your workspace. To get to the upload window, I'm going to click on the upload uh, button there on the left hand menu. Make sure that I have image selected and you can see the different file types. I'm working with an SVG. So I'm going to click on uh, upload image. And if you know where it's at, this is the uploader window, you can browse your files and find it. Or uh, I have mine sitting right here on the desktop. So I'm just going to grab it and drag it, and drop it into the window there and then go ahead and hit upload. So there you see my file. It looks like a flat thing right now, but this will all change. <laughs> it has pieces and layers. I'm going to move my window up here a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing. So once I hit the upload, you'll see it appear there in recent uploads. And you could delete it from here if you want, but that's not what we want to do. We want to work with it. So I'm going to click on it and it will highlight in green all the way around and then hit add to canvas. This is going to take me back to the canvas again. And there you can see that uh, Cricut has imported this image as an entire unit, even though there's multiple pieces to it. It always brings it in as a group. So in order to work with these, I need to make sure that they're selected and then hit the ungroup button. And there you can see it releases all of those pieces so that I can work with them individually. So I'm just going to click and drag these off of the card base and show you what the whole file looks like. And you can click on things by either clicking directly on them or you can use that layers panel there on the right to click on things individually. If you want to click on uh, multiples, you can click and drag over the top to select them all. You can also click on one piece in the layers panel and then hold your shift key down and click the next one and it will you know, select them together. Now I'm just showing you how the group and ungroup function works. It just works here in the canvas area and it's just for moving things around on the canvas. Now I layer all my files and usually have, the, if a base file has um, a score line, I usually layer all of those together, the score lines on top of the piece that's going to get scored down here at the bottom. And to find the score line, Cricut imports it as a cut line, but it's really a score line. If I just left it as a cut line, it would just cut that card in half. So I'm going to go ahead and click over here. See that color? It shows you that that line is blue. And all my score lines on my files are always going to be blue. And then I'm going to select a score and it will change when you click off it onto the canvas and deselect it, you'll see that it's changed to a dash line and that it's changed in the layers panel to score. Now, in order to get these to work together, you want to attach them. So I clicked on the Good Vibes card and I clicked on the score and I hit attach. You can also click and drag over the top of them, select them both together, click attach. So this is going to tell Design Space that I want that score line to land right there on that card. Now, if they're not attached, here's what happens. So I detached them for a second here to show you. It throws my score line as a separate piece onto a separate mat, and it's nowhere near on my card base, which is where I need it. So we're going to cancel out of this and go back to the canvas. Yeah, don't hit continue. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to score nothing. <laughs> so I'm going to select these. And as you can see, I accidentally grabbed the good vibe. So I'm going to click off of that to deselect. And you can either, like I said, drag over the top to select them both. Or you can click on the layer that you need and then hold your shift key down and click the next layer. And that will select both of them. Now I've hit attach. And now you can see that it's throwing everything onto the mat the way it should be. So this is my first cutting piece. I can actually move it around here. Um, so if I have a different size piece of paper, you just want to make sure that wherever that, it automatically loads it into the left hand corner, upper left corner, but you can move it and you want to make sure that what you do on screen, you reflect where you put your paper on your cutting mat because it's going to, it's going to, what you see is what you get kind of thing. 
So here I wanted to show you that my score line is now attached to my card and it's going to score exactly where I need it to and it's not going to cut my card in half. So I can move this around but you see how it flipped my cutting file automatically to fit that eight and a half by 11 paper. And you see a red border around there. That's the edge where the blade can only cut up to that edge and it won't go beyond that edge. So if I try to put my cutting file outside when I'm messing around with where I want to put it on the paper, um, it'll tell me, nope, can't go beyond that. <laughs> so you need to pay attention to where you're putting um, your cutting file on your paper. Make sure you don't go beyond that. Now I'm working with 12 by 12, so I'm going to go back and switch it back to 12 by 12. And there you can see um, everything's ready to go. And I'm going to start with the mat number one, and then I'll hit the continue. So I start back at the beginning of all the cutting and it's going to go through. It's going to take me to the materials window. So this is important here. You want to set the materials that you're working with. So it's now going to connect to your maker. So you have your maker on and it connects via Bluetooth or if you have the line, you know, the cable direct connection there. So I need to tell what I'm cutting. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Browse Materials. Now I have my favorites. I've already starred all my favorites. But if you don't know what you're working with and you need to find it, because the Cricut will self-calibrate to the types of materials that you're working with, you need to find that material. So you can use the Categories shortcut. Um, you can type in in the search bar exactly what it is you're looking for and click the star and then it knows um, I need, this is her favorite. I'm going to throw it up here. She has this many uh, favorites. So these are all the ones that I typically use a lot. So I just went ahead and starred those. And when I'm cutting cardstock, I usually work with American Crafts 80 pound and I use the Cricut or cardstock for intricate cuts. You can decrease the pressure or increase the pressure, but I find that the default is a good place to start, run a test cut, and then determine there if you want more pressure or less pressure. And if everything you're cutting on this project is all going to be the same thing, then you can tell it to remember the material settings so that you don't have to go through and make that choice every time it moves to the next mat. So now it's going to tell me to load these materials. Right now it's going to be doing a cutting um, procedure. So it wants to make sure that the blade is loaded and that I have my mat loaded. And when I go over to my cutting machine, I will click the arrow button and it will load the paper. So it will cut everything it's supposed to cut and unload as I'm uh, doing all those processes. But I wanted to show you what happens when you get to um, a dual process or dual function um, mat. So I have scoring and cutting on this and I like to use the scoring wheel. So the machine is going to stop and flash at me and the computer screen will tell me I need to switch this tool, the blade, for the scoring wheel. It will also give me a warning, you know, what I'm going to need after it completes the scoring process. Now if you don't have a scoring wheel or you prefer using the stylus, you can switch those out and apply that and it will say, oh, this is the clamp you need to load that into. This is the clamp this needs to be loaded into. Remember, I'm working with a Cricut Maker. I'm not sure if it works the same on the uh, Cricut Explorer or the Explore Air. So, but I know that on the Maker, I love the fact that um, it gives me two different housings there um, to work with. But I'm gonna stick with the scoring wheel, so I'm gonna revert it back to that. And I can see there that after I'm done scoring, I'm going to need to use my fine point blade for the rest of the processes. And Cricut always puts uh, scoring whenever there's a dual um, process or dual function going on. It's going to do the scoring first and the cutting second. So now that we have that set, I'm going to take you back to the canvas. I'm going to cancel um, out of this. Back to the canvas here. And I did want to show you that I have all the prep work done here on my canvas, but what happens if I want to recreate this? Well, you actually have a really nice option. You can save this project after you've done all the file prep into uh, your My Projects folder. Now, um, I have five different uh, collections here. I'm gonna choose card making and I'm gonna give it a name, type that in really quick. And then when I hit save, it's going to save all the setup that I did on this SVG file right there in my projects library. 
So I wanted to show you what happens now when I go into my projects library. I can find this project, click on it, and all of the details there I can edit using the edit project details button. Uh, I can save it for offline use in case I'm not, you know, I don't have an internet connection. Or I can go ahead and hit make it. And when I hit make it, it will throw it onto the cutting mats and just go right on ahead with the project and bypass all that prep work. If I need to change anything, I can hit customize and then it will allow me to go back to the canvas with it and make any changes that I want to. But just for the sake of demonstration, I'll hit make it and here you can see I bypassed the canvas. I went straight to the cutting uh, screen and I can go ahead and hit continue on my way. But that's, you know, how you use your uh, saving your projects in your uh, projects folder there. Now for the sake of demonstration, uh, I'm going to click on the project and hit the Customize button to show you how it brings it all up again into the canvas this time. It doesn't go straight to the cutting uh, window. It stays here on the canvas and I can go in and make whatever changes I want. Maybe I want to change the color of that particular component. Um, I really like that it throws everything on there. It helps me stay organized when I'm assembling my projects. I don't like purple though, so... <laughs> I'm going to switch that back to blue. So yeah, you'll almost never see me do anything in purple. <laughs> I don't know why. I just find it hard to work with purple. So I don't. But anyway, you can also use the advanced color tab thing, depending if you know, you're know you trying to get a more exact match to the paper that you're working with. Um, but anyway, and now if I hit save, it will save those changes. Um, if I don't hit save, it will, I can go ahead and hit make it and it will take me to the cutting screen and we'll begin the uh, cutting process at that point. But um, I like the original colors that I chose, so I'm not going to worry about saving, you know, my changes to this. Um, I'm just going to delete all this uh, off the screen, get rid of it, boom. And the file, the way I last saved it, is the way it's going to cut the next time I want to use it or want to make changes. And there you can see, yep, that's the original setup. Alrighty, hope you find that helpful.